So I cannot believe that it's Thursday. We've had such an amazing week with some great sessions. And today, hopefully, um, you'll find just as valuable. Um, I'm Judy Teven. This is Simone Jennings. And we're with you today to talk about PBIS, right? So positive behavioral interventions and supports. And we really want to talk about where it fits into the MTSS framework and the important role that data plays when um, really working with this entire process. That's right. So our goal here today is to provide clarity on exactly what PBIS is and give you a holistic view of the best practices to implement for student success. Now we'll review the impact that data tracking can have for determining the best approaches and we'll pull it all together with an example framework and how to use Classworks in your PBIS strategy. That's right. So let's start with a definition, right? Let's define PBIS, positive behavioral interventions and supports proactively establishes behavioral support for all students in a school to achieve social, emotional, and academic success. The initiative is focused on creating and sustaining school-wide classroom and individual practices for improving student academic and behavior outcomes, right? So there is a lot of research out there, but as you already know, in the past, school-wide discipline has mostly concentrated on reacting to student conduct by utilizing punishment-based tactics, you know, such as reprimands, deprivation of privileges, office referrals, suspensions, and exposure expulsions. And punishment, especially when it's applied inconsistently and in the absence of other effective methods, has been found to be ineffective, right? So as a student's education progresses, modeling good social conduct, teaching it, and rewarding it are all vital steps towards success. It's far more effective to teach behavioral standards and celebrate student wins for following them than it is to wait for misbehavior before reacting. The school-wide PBIS goals are rooted in creating a culture in which good conduct is the standard. That's right. Now, before we dive into what makes up a successful positive behavioral practice and intervention, we must understand why PBIS is so important. Now, there's no doubt that there are many benefits to making PBIS an essential part of your intervention program, but there are four specific pros that we'd like to call out today. And these benefits include creating a positive school environment where students are excited to learn, encouraging the safety of everyone within the school with the implementation of supportive techniques and tools, improving the relationship between a student and his or her educators, and using positive reinforcement strategies to motivate and encourage students to do their best. Now, when establishing common area expectation, explicitly teaching those expectations and providing fun and meaningful reinforcement, we set our students up for positive experiences and outcomes. So in order to produce those positive results that Simone just mentioned, a thoughtful approach must be taken to ensure a firm foundation has been established to cultivate a successful PBIS program. Setting the stage with structure and routines lays the groundwork, right, for those expectations and rules. So what other foundational elements can be integrated to support expectations that we've established? Well, we need to consider local, meaningful, and culturally relevant outcomes. Strengthen the student educator connections, right, with relevancy and relatability using references that students see and you know, know and find interest in on that daily basis. Now, it's also important to lean on empirically supported practices or evidence-based practices. So these are specific solutions that have been thoroughly researched and are proven just to work with evidence, right? The two most common practices are prevention and response. All right, so what are prevention practices? They're commonly used within tier one intervention and can include reminding, 
prompting and rewarding students, right? Things that we know teachers do all day long, right? Classworks observations are a great tool to use alongside prevention methods to communicate and reinforce expectations with students. Now, response practices are used to correct behaviors and create learning opportunities that emphasize the desired outcomes. The students can greatly benefit from the parent partnership and brief preemptive escalation strategies that often occur in these response techniques. Now, the Student My Scores page is a great resource to utilize with response methods, keeping all parties in the loop. Now, all of your practices and outcomes should be monitored and guided by data. An effective, efficient, and equitable data solution shows you exactly where your students are thriving and struggling throughout the intervention process. So use a reliable and intuitive system that pulls all the pieces together. Having the right tool to house all of your implementation, data, and feedback supplies the str and streamlines, right? And simplifies the entire process for all parties. And lastly, what is a great foundation for if we haven't yet established our goals? So the overall success of st for students and the PBIS program relies heavily on the ability to set and track goals. Yeah, that's right. And you know, typically there are three levels of PBIS. Does that sound familiar to anybody? The levels of follow the same levels of MTSS. And that's not where the connection ends. We know that students who have behavior concerns, they often have academic concerns as well. So addressing the whole child is always in the forefront as both academic and behavioral interventions are approached. So let's look at all three levels, right? Tier one, which is considered the universal or the school-wide interventions. Tier two is focused on targeted interventions and tier three individualized. So let's break each of these tiers down to get a better understanding of what a PBIS intervention can encompass at each and every level. So let's start with tier one, right? Tier one can be best described as the common expectations for all students. At this level, we focus on building a social culture where students know and acknowledge the appropriate behaviors that are expected of them, right? So when a student is responding positively to tier one interventions, you will commonly observe students across the school prompting and reinforcing positive behaviors for one another. Um, tier one usually meets the needs of 80% or more of, of your students in your school. So here we're referring to school-wide expectations that support students in all areas of the school. So these are the five universal supports for all students in all settings. So we want to build relationships. We want to set expectations, rules, and procedures. We want to teach those expectations, rules, and procedures, redirect and set consequences, and acknowledge, which I just love, which means verbally recognizing behavior choices, participation, and growth for students. Now, school teams use data-based decision-making to ensure that the needs of all students are met at Tier 1. Screening occurs on a regular basis to identify students who are in need of greater support within the PBIS framework. Formative SEL assessments helps educators promote students' competencies by fostering effective SEL instruction in classrooms, create an instructional plan based on a classroom profile of competencies, elevate students' voices and promote student engagement and agency, improve school and district implementation strategies, and foster equitable learning environments by revealing disparities. So the Classworks SE survey, social emotional survey is really perfect to meet this particular need. It is a student facing check-in survey for students in grades four through 12, and it's a teacher administrator administered for K-3. The Classworks SE survey has students think through a variety of scenarios and mark if they find them very difficult, difficult, easy, or very easy. Hey, Judy. Then, yeah. Judy, I'm so sorry to interrupt. Up oh, there it goes. The slides. Yeah, it's, la it's lagging some. Okay. Yep. Sorry about that. Um, 
or very easy. Then data is reported back to the teacher. Having a profile of competencies across the school provides the data to measure growth within those competencies and ultimately measure the success of SEL initiatives. Now, after your survey is compiled, your survey data, right, is compiled and analyzed, set school-wide expectations. So set, um, select like three to five broad expectations, then set really specific ones for each area in the school that fit within those broader expectations. So for example, within the school-wide expectation of be safe in the cafeteria, the rule would be stay seated until dismissal and walk. So list behaviors that you want to see from the students in a positive manner and reflect student voice. And then when creating the list, be sure to be culturally responsive to the student body at your school as well. So ultimately, you're creating an expectations matrix, just like you see on the screen, and that'll list those school-wide expectations and the corresponding rules in each setting, right? So keeping these expectations in every aspect of the school day really brings them to life for students. Beyond the school-wide expectations, Classrooms develop their own set of rules based on the larger, again, expectations. Involving the students in the development of this list really empowers them to work as a team toward those shared outcomes. Yeah, that's a great, great example there. Now, as we move on to tier two, the main focus is to provide more support for students who may have struggled with tier one expectations. And normally around five to 15% of students are supported at the tier two level. And these supports can include additional teaching and practice opportunities that encourage and increase the likelihood of success. Now, when students benefit from tier two interventions, you commonly will notice a positive change in their accountability and their self-management. And oftentimes this can be attributed to a combination of intervention techniques. So first let's talk about the CICO or check-in, check-out method. Now this technique provides an opportunity for students to work closely with a mentor on a daily basis. Using these 10 minute daily meetings to check in with students and reinforce those expectations can really help prevent unwanted behaviors before they actually manifest. Now this is also a great time to share feedback and offer support to your students. You can use Classworks observations for optimal tracking. Mentors make two notes a day, one at check-in and one at check-out. The ease of an online tool for this is completely like really invaluable. Yeah, and small group skill instruction is also common at tier two. So grouping students with similar behavioral needs and providing a safe space for behavior-based conversations and instruction is a key component to tier two interventions. So use the classwork goal tracker to set SMART goals for this group of students. Focus on areas deemed difficult in the social and emotional survey taken by the students, such as handling frustration within self-management. The students create goals to apply and track when they use the strategies that they've learned, you know, that have been taught to them, right, to regulate their emotions, such as taking a movement break or taking deep breaths, finding a quiet place for a few minutes, you know, et cetera. Now, lastly, targeted academic support for these students can be very important as well. They may require attention beyond that, again, that universal support. You may decide to implement specific tools, lessons, techniques, and activities that provide further opportunities and um, support for students as they learn specific skills. And again, Classworks is the perfect tool for this. Integrating that academic intervention with the behavioral goals truly addresses the whole child. That's right. So tier two interventions typically work best for students with low engagement and classroom par 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 participation. Ooh, that was a tongue twister. And also who may have challenges related to regulating their emotions and attentiveness and also may struggle with responding positive to uh, adult attention. That's right. So let's go into tier three. 
Tier three is focused primarily on individualized and systematic procedures that can help lower the frequency of real problem behavior. So we're talking about approximately three to 5% of students are targeted with this level of support. So formal strategies are implemented to help acknowledge and reinforce this the, any desired behaviors, right? It's important to remember that tier three is not always a one size fits all solution. So often tier three interventions will vary from student to student and really from school to school. So with this level of support, it's likely that a process will be introduced where this, uh, the student's family and community takes a more active role with reinforcing specific PBIS techniques in the home environment in tandem with their child's PBIS in-school intervention. That's right. So now that we have a deeper understanding of what PBIS is and how it, we can encompass it at each and every level, let's look a little closer at the role that practices, systems, and data plays in creating and sustaining a PBIS framework that makes a real impact. So as we stated earlier, practices are the strategies and techniques set in place to encourage a positive behavioral output. And strategies used should be evidence-based and adaptive per tier requirements, student needs and progress and data considerations as well. The role of practices within the framework of PBIS is to introduce new techniques that meet the needs of students and provide additional opportunities to master and maintain positive behavioral skills. Now, in order for these practices to fulfill their role, it's important to implement them with fidelity and monitor them consistently. Evaluating success and making necessary modifications are all essential keys to providing the best opportunities for student success. Now, we've touched on the importance of data, and in the next section, we'll take an even deeper look at this. But for now, we just want to reinforce the importance of tracking progress with an effective data system that not only provides metrics on how the student is doing, but also gives educators the clarity needed on areas of opportunity for those students. Data's role is to monitor the effectiveness of students' interventions. With this understanding, educators can make necessary adjustments to the student's PBIS intervention plan in a timely and efficient manner. Now, a robust system that meets all your needs for PBIS is really important, and it's a good, you know, piece of the puzzle that, unfortunately, sometimes it gets overlooked, right? So it can be really difficult to keep track of all the moving parts and the important components that make up PBIS. A good system will help you consolidate your tools and sustain and deliver your PBIS practices. That's right. So we, now we understand the roles of practices, data, and systems in a PBIS process, but what does PBIS look like inside of the MTSS framework? So we often hear PBIS and MTSS discussed separately, but in truth, that behavior has an impact on academic success and vice versa, right? PBIS is under the MTSS umbrella, along with RTI, right? Ensuring that the whole child is addressed. Now, as we have said, maybe more than a couple of times today and this week, honestly, when implementing interventions, it's important to keep the whole child in mind. How does one intervention affect another area of opportunity for the student? This is an important consideration when implementing a successful PBIS plan with this so that the students have buy-in and take action on, right? And because Classworks offers the opportunity to track SEL objectives all the while addressing student academic growth, it's really the perfect platform to guide discussion during student support team or SST team meetings, right? So candidates for PBIS interventions are often referred and monitored through the SST process. This creates a, a great opportunity to streamline your systems and intervention techniques even to target a student's overall growth instead of addressing interventions you know, as a separate entity, right? So when addressing the entire child, data plays a much more important role because you're not looking at each intervention singularly. You compare and contrast all of your data to determine how the student is responding to the entire intervention plan and how those techniques and tools used across the interventions are affecting the child. Now, for both tier two and three, 
data collection and monitoring really is the cornerstone of measuring fidelity and impact on students overall success again with their PBIS interventions. And this is where really having a clear and easy way to track data is vital to determining next steps for students, especially receiving that tier three support. And Classworks will not only house all the academic and behavioral tracking under one roof, but because it's an online resource, easily involves parents in the process and eliminates that need for relying on students to act as paper couriers, right? <laughs> we have all been there, right? So for example, let's look at how we would walk through Audrey's data in an SST meeting. Audrey's placement data on progress monitoring recommends her for intervention based on her last universal screener results. So jumping to, into the student details, we see her last completed progress monitoring session was targeted using skills-based CBM probes, assessing algebra on the fourth grade level. As we scroll down a little bit, we have some notes here. She showed some frustration when taking the probe. So Ms. Poole has shared that she's making sure that Audrey now takes her probe when she first comes to class. And this helps just to avoid interrupting any other work that she's working on or projects. So this note provides insight into Audrey's frustration as well as the actions that her teacher is taking. So looking further down, we see the cumulative question responses for Audrey. Now, overall, her scores are actually pretty high, but not necessarily consistent. So the team clicks into some incorrect responses to see what Audrey is missing. Her teacher identifies it using variables as an unknown to review in small group with Audrey. And this is a great data point to use to make instructional decisions, right? Now, overall, the progress monitoring graph depicts success. Audrey has five data points above 80% mastery, so her teacher assigned her skills-based algebra probes at the fifth grade level, and she's hopeful that this will help prepare her for new concepts in class. The team is not only tracking Audrey's academic progress, it was shared in the last meeting that based on Audrey's social emotional survey, there were many areas that she felt were difficult for her under self-management. The teacher is working with Audrey to learn strategies to use when she's frustrated. And in her goal tracker documents, uh, we can see that how when uh, she uses the calming strategies that were given to her and offers her an opportunity also to chat with her teacher about how she is doing. All right. Now, as you can see, a thorough review of her classwork's data provides deep insight into the many aspects of student life that ultimately impact student outcomes, right? Of course, you can ask any teacher and they will tell you that behavior and academics really do go hand in hand. And this approach makes for a much more successful intervention plan that meets a student's needs in multiple areas head on increasing the likelihood of overall success. Now, without a central place to systemize and streamline PBIS processes, it can really be difficult to, to gain a clear picture of the support needed for students, right? That traditional paper and pencil tracking, but it really, it is difficult to manage. And they also make it really challenging for all parties to gain visibility into what's going on within the PBIS intervention. A digital tracking system creates an effective process that really does cut down that manual labor, which results in a lot of time, you know, saving on those filings and copying and sharing those physical documents and not to mention eliminating the need to keep up with all that crumpled paper making its way home to the students house each day I had go through that all the time with my kids so I know how that is <laughs> that's right I think we've all been there yeah um, Classworks provides really the perfect solution for what we're talking about for this tracking the entire process. This all-in-one system is intuitive and easy to use and allows educators to focus their attention on sustaining an effective um, PBIS implementation process. Our integrated tools such as the data, documentation, motivation, and goal tracking really simplify what used to be a cumbersome and you know, frustrating and time-consuming process. We saw one example of how data is reviewed in Classworks. So let's jump back into the Classworks platform so that we can show you firsthand how our integrated tools uh, make the intervention process easier um, for all educators. We'll go through them tool by tool. 
Yes. So first we're going to start with observations. And that is really one of the favorite features among our Classworks users. You know, the ability for teachers to communicate with students on their progress in their areas of opportunity have really proven to be a very powerful tool for reinforcing expectations. Observations, they're visible across departments so that all PBIS team members and faculty can view feedback and also stay up to date on recommendations, motivations, and strategies that's being used to support students learning and behavioral interventions. Basically, with a click of a button, educators can print or share uh, feedback with parents, uh, administrators, or even PBIS team members and gain a full view from the teacher's perspective, which is really, really helpful. That's, that's really true. So let's move into goal tracking. Goal tracking is also a great tool to encourage personal accountability among students. We're all familiar with the SMART goal. I'm sure we've all set SMART goals in, in the past, that system, and, and that has really moved into the classroom. And we really do understand the importance of goal setting and what it can have on cultivating um, positive behavior environment, right? So Classworks has adapted that, that framework, right? Which is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely goals within the platform to give educators a way to integrate the process of setting positive objectives with their students. And if you missed the great session yesterday with Jen and Jordan, you can definitely watch the recording where they walk through all of these um, really some great, um, you know, just tactics with um, for goal setting, right? Um, it, it really is an integrated, integrating that, um, you know, setting those goals with, you know, speaking with your teacher. So we did integrate that messaging system, which allows for teachers and students to chat back and forth about their goals and progress. This added benefit helps maintain and strengthen the student educator relationship. Yeah, that's so important. Um, we've also used the word motivation a lot today, but how can we acknowledge positive achievements and reward important milestones during interventions? After all, celebrating success really can set the tone for a positive and successful PBIS process. So Classworks badges are a great way to reward a job well done. When students receive a new badge, they'll be excited to share their win with their parents, right? And luckily, you don't have to wait until the conference to share insight on important milestones with guardians. The student My Scores page includes student progress, badges earned, and teacher feedback. And this page is simple to use and can be shared with parents to observe and track their child's success throughout the entire PBIS process. That's right. Those are That's always fun to look at. Um, and then when we go back into our social and emotional survey that we've talked about today as well, um, these techniques have become more and more of a focus, right, for schools recently. It's, it's just become really so important. So the realization on how social and emotional situations impact students' learning is an important consideration for the overall personal and academic success of each individual student. And because we recognize the important role that teachers play in providing holistic support for each child, we've included this SEL survey that's easy for teachers to access, right? This survey is designed to provide educators with a full picture view of students, SEL learning and how it impacts and, and really what it, if it's contributing to their behavior overall. So our survey concentrates on five major SEL areas, including relationship skills, responsible decision-making, self-awareness, self-management, and social awareness. And we also had a great session yesterday on this survey as well. So definitely check that out. Yeah, we sure did. Now, these are all major contributing, contributing factors to positive behavior in the classroom. The results found from using this survey can help determine students' PBIS support needs and to address the SEL concerns, right? So now that we've clarified what PBIS is, discussed the three levels of it, and took a deeper look at how to create and sustain an effective and streamlined tracking system, it's time to pull all the pieces of the puzzle together and create a PBIS framework that you can copy, tweak, and implement right away. There we go. All right, let's start with foundations. 
Step one is building a solid foundation for everyone. Start by setting clear expectations and rules that we talked about. Reinforcement is the key to maintaining these rules and can be as simple as teaching expectations daily with structure and routines, right? The use of the Classworks Goal Tracker to create clear and measurable goals is also a foundational tool that everyone can benefit from and build upon, right? It creates a structured way to positively encourage accountability and forward thinking while measuring progress for all students. So after setting the foundation, it's time to implement behavioral prevention practices. So while each child will be respond will respond to ultimately to different techniques, there are some staple practices that many educators use within their PBIS framework. So step two is to provide clear reminders before behavior is expected. So the more you reinforce expectations, the better chances all students have to stay on track with positive behaviors. Here's where integrating the classworks observation feature can really help re reinforce your prevention practices and keep students clear on those classroom expectations. And step three is rethink the seating chart in the classroom, right? Try coupling reinforcement using classworks observations and a simple change in environment. Sometimes implementing seemingly small classroom changes like from moving to tables from just desk can make all the difference when it comes to behavior. That's right. So as we keep moving forward, step four is meeting with students to review observations and setting goals using Goal Tracker. So this quick CICO meeting that we talked about before is really perfect for discussing progress and helpful adjustments that will improve um, you know, student success in their PBIS process. And step five is acknowledging, praising, and rewarding students, which is so important, right? A little encouragement does go a long way. So you want to reward your students for a job well done and celebrate their successes along the way by utilizing badges and sending parents progress reports with the Student My Scores page in Classworks. Now, when it's time to go beyond prevention techniques, response practices should be implemented. And this is where behavior correction plays a key role in PBIS. So step six is correcting behavior with brief and specific statements using positive language. So sometimes planned ignoring is a response followed by modeling the correct response and acknowledging appropriate behavior within the group. Using preemptive escalation strategies can oftentimes de-escalate behaviors before causing major disruptions. So prepare students for transitions by asking them to hold a bubble in their mouth to create a quiet environment. It's best to use strategies that create learning opportunities for students that model the desired behavior. That's right. Response practices can also include parent communication, right? So, so step seven is keep parents informed. As previously mentioned, sending a live link of that student progress via that MyScores page really makes parent partnership a key component to student success. And there's one last major PBIS framework component. Data is what aligns curricular instruction and behavior supports to student and staff needs. So it's important to create the host environment that we discussed earlier within tier one, where clear expectations are made and behaviors are explicitly taught and reinforced in all areas of the school. PBIS is effective when evidence-based practices are in place and closely tracked. So that does bring us to step number eight, which is streamlined, efficient, and user-friendly systems and data. And Classworks hits all the marks when it comes to efficiency, ease, and streamlining. That's right. Our all-in-one intuitive system makes it really easy to record and monitor behavior and frequency in observations for all parties, including parents to review. The SEL survey provides tracking and measuring of students' social and emotional behavioral impacts and progress, contributing to the decision-making process for interventions. The Goal Tracker creates a space for students to privately create and monitor their own academic and behavioral goals and gain the support needed from educators with an integrated messaging system. And all of this data is easily accessible, it's printable, it's downloadable, all from one dashboard, making documentation for SST meetings really a no-brainer. So as we recap here, PBIS success highly depends on creating an implementation plan that considers the whole child and targets students' needs at each level. 
Though acknowledging and reinforcing desired behaviors is essential, a successful PBIS framework really does consider many factors to increase the likelihood of student success. And those factors can include building a firm foundation, creating prevention and response practices, incorporating data to monitor and manage interventions, utilizing a system that all parties can gain visibility into student progress, social and emotional learning impacts, local and cultural influences, and academic and behavioral goals. Classwork simplifies the intervention process, making it easy to see students from multiple perspectives and track a variety of influences over time. Thank you guys. So we had, yeah, some, yeah. We did, we had some questions that came through, but this session was so good. It's so informational. And obviously the, the social emotional side of, of, of the whole child has gotten to the forefront of everyone's minds. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this was awesome. So a couple of questions. We had a few questions actually about the survey. Um, we had uh, one person that didn't know we had one. And then um, can you kind of show us how to get to the survey on the teacher and the student side? Of course, the, the district has to turn it on. Maybe you can speak to that a little bit more. Yeah, so I will, I'll start it off. I'll kick it off, uh, Judy. Sure. <laughs> um, so your district will actually turn on uh, the survey if they decide to participate in it. And then every four to 12th grade student can access that survey when they log into Classworks under assessment. Um, it is both in English and in Spanish, which is really great. And it also can be read aloud as well. Uh, the version for K3 will have uh, less questions and be administered by the teacher. Yeah, and, and if I the district just turns it on, it automatically shows up under the assessment. The teacher doesn't have to assign it. It's automatically there. Right. I was thinking, yeah. So I figured it would be here for Aud Audrey as our as our little go-to friend here in our demo site. So it would just, just go to assessments here. Let me go back. So this was what Audrey sees when she logs in. If she has progress monitoring, that shows up up at the top and of course disappears when she's taken her probes. But if she wants to, if you want them to take the survey, it's right here. Um, underneath there. So super easy for the kids to get to. Perfect. Thank you so much. So as an academic coach, can we get access um, to the insights tab or is this only for administrators? Um, I can take that one. So um, you, what you need to do is talk to um, your principal um, and find out where they want those permissions to lie. Um, so if, you're, if your principal gives you site level administrator, you would be able to have access to that as well. So um, I think it's just your conversation. I, I, it sounds like from what the position that, and how if you're dealing with all the students and things like that, and you're, if you're especially specifically managing the classwork's implementation, that could be a very valuable um, data for you. So, um, so definitely talk to your principal and then they would um, contact the curriculum instruction specialist and we'll, we'll get that all your permission set up for you so you can see it. Perfect. And there is actually one of um, is it the session this afternoon that actually covers mm -hmm. those insights. And it, yeah. yeah. And it really does great. take it from that principal view, which again, if you are in charge of the classworks implementation could definitely be highly valuable for you as well, for sure. Perfect. Great question. Great. And then I had one other one. You showed some data in your SST meeting example, but could you talk a little bit more about data in a meeting uh, like that. Yeah, and we do run through, um, that was a short version of that example. We do run through something a little bit more in depth in our SST session. So definitely feel free um, to, to look at the, that recording um, when those come through. Um, but the big, the big, I think, um, you know, takeaway that I want you to have from that is that Classworks offers so much live data so that what we show you that could actually be on a whiteboard during that SST meeting, right? And you could be reassigning progress monitoring, changing levels, um, you know, reassigning instruction. All of these things are just, are all taking action on data and that can absolutely be taking part and being part of your, um, your student support team meetings. Um, now, if if you need documentation, everything can be printed. So those observations, 
you just go to the top and click print. Obviously, all of the progress monitoring, you just go to generate report and you are printing all of that. So, so think about it from the, the perspective of what do you need for live data to take action on versus what needs to go home to a parent or what needs to go into a, a student folder. That's what you would want to print. And then otherwise, a lot of the data just needs to be everyone logged into Classworks and then you've got access to everything. Yeah, that's right. Thanks, Thank everybody. You so much. Have a great day. Thanks.